Good afternoon everyone, my name is Ilse Boyson. I am a social worker at Stabilis Treatment Centre and as promised in my previous video, today I would like to talk to you about the biopsychosocial model. So probably you would think what is the biopsychosocial model? So it is a model that we use to explain why people become addicted to a substance. And it's also a model that's used in the medical field to diagnose illnesses as well. So the, 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 I'm going to divide it for you into three sections because it is in three sections, but just explaining it to you in that way. So the bio stands for the biological component that acts as a contributor factor to why people become addicted. And that would basically um, explain genetics that because of genes in your family you know some people have a predisposition to become addicted to a substance but it is not a definite that if let's say my family member my father mother um, if they were addicted to alcohol that I would definitely become addicted to alcohol as well no that's not how it works it only stipulates and explains that if you have the gene to become addicted to a substance, it does not mean that you are doomed. It just means that you have a predisposition to it. And what I would also would like to add is that we need to see these three components as, as, a, as a whole, as a unit of, of how it con contributes to addiction. And not just one thing or like being, being the, the, the biological component or the psychological component, but seeing it holistically as well. That brings me to my second point, which speaks about the psychological component, which is the psycho part. And that talks about um, mental illnesses, that speaks about, um, you know, if you have certain emotional skills that you don't know how to manage, like stress, anger, time management, how to communicate, social skills, interpersonal skills. Um, and we see it so many times in the clinic that, that, that it's not that people did not have those skills, they just somehow forgot about it and it just didn't become that important anymore. Or they were raised in a home where um, they were not allowed to speak about emotions and feel the emotions. And that is a big challenge because if, if we don't reflect, if we don't become self-aware, then it's easy to be vulnerable to a substance and to become addicted to it. That brings me to my third point, which is the social component, which speaks about people, places, circumstances, your environment. And that would typically be like um, trauma, um, divorce, uh, grief, uh, financial circumstances, retrenchment, COVID, which is so applicable right now, which also contributes to why people become addicted. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to the social component, not everything is within our control. Like we will maybe be able to control our work circumstances, but we can't control illness or death in a family. So it's a 50-50 um, um, chance of, or not 50-50 chance, but a 50-50 approach of how to, to deal with, 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 the, with the social part of things. Um, and, and then when I speak about this to my patients, I will always ask them, then why is it if some of the circumstances we can't control and others we can control, we tend to focus, all of us, me included, we tend to focus on situations and circumstances that is not within our control. You know, and there's a saying that goes, whatever's not good for us, if we hold on to it, it hurts us more, so we have to let go of it. And I constantly challenge myself and my patients that we need to change our approach, our perspective by focusing on the things that is within our control and building on that. And the reason for that is why I put emphasis on the social component is because many times when, when patients relapse, they relapse because of circumstances. And that brings me to my following point. But before I get there, I just want to add that you know, circumstances, life will always be a part of life. And we can't determine it, we can't plan it, we don't have control over it, we only have control over ourselves. And that is why we need to teach ourselves and acquire the skill to take our focus away from circumstances and challenges. I know it's difficult, 
but our mind is very powerful and rather to focus on the psychological component. And that brings us to the emotions, which is the difficult part. We have to remember that emotions are a part of us. We cannot run away from it. We cannot avoid it. And I always explain that emotions are messengers. When we feel anxious, when we feel happy, when we feel sad, when we feel excited, it's trying to tell us something. It's something happened or something is going to happen. And then we need to ask ourselves, okay, how am I going to manage this? What am I going to put in place? in order for me to regulate myself and to deal with a situation that brought up this emotion. And that in essence, ladies and gentlemen, is the only component that we have control over. That is the psychological component. So we need to constantly, and people who are faced with, with, with addiction, in order for them to not relapse in future, they need to focus on the emotions. And the word that I usually use for focusing on emotions or the tool is AAV, accept our emotions, acknowledge it, and then verbalize it. And we can even go further by saying, okay, what can I put in place, you know, to deal with this emotion? Yesterday, I'm feeling anxious. Okay, why am I feeling anxious? Did I have a bad dream? Didn't I sleep well? Did I have a very um, troubling phone call with someone last night before I went to bed? Or is it just that I woke up that way? And when you get to that answer to then ask yourself, what can I put in place to manage this emotion and not to avoid it or get rid of it? Because that is a challenge and that is why most people become addicted to the substance because they want to avoid their emotions and we cannot avoid our emotions. So what I need you to remember who's watching this video is that there's three components that contribute to addiction. It's not just one, it's not just two, it's three. And sometimes it can be two of the three and not everything. Um, and the message that I want to leave you with is that in order, if you are watching this video and you are in recovery, or if you have a family member, you know, who you see is, is busy falling into addiction, to tell yourself and to tell them that they need to start focusing on the emotions and become comfortable with the emotions and start feeling the emotions, you know, and, and that will prevent one from relapsing and also becoming addicted. I hope this information helped. There's still so much that I want to say, um, but I want to keep it short and, and, and simple. Um, that in essence is important to, to be able to sit with our emotions. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe to Sabilis' channel on YouTube. Please comment, please like if you have any questions or anything is unclear, then please put it in the comment section down below. My next video will be about um, how COVID has affected um, society and how it has affected addiction as well. So I would like to talk about that because that is in our clinic, that is the situation that we are confronted with at least, or me at least on a daily basis. Thank you so much. I hope that you have a wonderful day. Bye.